key to success in working Graham's Law of Effusion, or diffusion problems, is the whole concept of understanding rates and when you have rates correctly expressed. Let's look at Graham's Law. Graham's Law has to do with the rapid and random motion of tiny gas molecules. Well, it's the escape of gas molecules through very small openings. Why does a helium balloon lose its helium? You've got it enclosed in a container. It's enclosed in, in, a, in a good balloon, usually. Well, the, the holes that it may be escaping through may only be about the size of the, the atoms or molecules that are escaping. So the helium can very gradually effuse through those tiny openings. Gases can effuse through a number of tiny openings. You may have a bottle of a gas sealed in a way that you think is very, very tight and find that the gas has effused. It happens. Effusion, the escape of gas molecules through very small openings. The rate of this motion, how rapidly it will effuse, is definitely related to the kinetic energy of the molecules. More correctly stated, it should be to the translational kinetic energy of the molecules. The kinetic energy, or if you will, translational kinetic energy, is one half the mass times the mean square speed, or the average square speed, however you wish to say it. You should know that the kinetic energy of a gas is directly related to temperature, and that makes sense, doesn't it? because if you increase the temperature, then you're going to increase the kinetic energy of a gas. You're going to increase the rate at which it will effuse or escape. The law is frequently stated like this. Rates of effusion of different gases at the same conditions are inversely proportional to the square roots of their molecular masses. In other words, the heavier the gas is, the slower it effuses. The lighter the gas is, the more quickly it effuses. So the rate of A times the square root of the mass of A is equal to the rate of B times the square root of the mass of B. And the mass that we're referring to is the molecular mass. The rate, how is the rate expressed? Rate is always going to have to be something per unit time. Don't ever forget that. It may be just reciprocal time. It could be liters per minute. Any one of things. But it has to be per unit time. If oxygen effuses from a container at the rate of 3.64 milliliters per second, what is the molecular weight of a gas effusing from the same container at 4.48 milliliters per second. Now stop for a minute and be logical. Oxygen is effusing at 3.64 milliliters per second. This other gas effuses at 4.48 milliliters per second. The other gas is, is effusing more rapidly. What is this going to tell you about the molecular weight of the other gas when compared to the molecular weight of oxygen? Well, the other gas is effusing more quickly, so you would then logically deduce that the other gas is going to have a lesser molecular weight. Let's see if, in fact, that is the case. We're going to use our expression, the rate of effusion of A times the square root of the molecular mass of A is equal to the rate of effusion of B times the square root of the molecular mass of B. 3.64 which is the rate of effusion of oxygen times the square root of 32 grams per mole. I'm not being very, very good with my, my significant digits, am I? Is equal to 4.58 milliliters per second times the square root of the mass of B. So we work this out, and I come out that the square root of the mass of B is 4.50. Now, folks, don't screw up your math at this point. The square root of the mass of B is 4.50. Therefore, the mass of B is 
4.50 squared. So it's 20.2 grams per mole. And yes, that is significantly lighter than oxygen, isn't it? Remember how rates must be expressed. And be really, really careful in this portion of the problem. And remember, it is the square root of the mass of B that is equal to 4.50. So the mass of B then must be squaring both sides of that equation. If oxygen effuses from a container at the rate of 3.64 milliliters per second, what is the molecular weight of a gas effusing from the same container at 4.48 milliliters per second? Now stop for a minute and be logical. Oxygen is effusing at 3.64 milliliters per second. This other gas effuses at 4.48 milliliters per second. The other gas is, is effusing more rapidly. What is this going to tell you about the molecular weight of the other gas when compared to the molecular weight of oxygen? Well, the other gas is effusing more quickly, so you would then logically deduce that the other gas is going to have a lesser molecular weight. Let's see if, in fact, that is the case. We're going to use our expression, the rate of effusion of A times the square root of the molecular mass of A is equal to the rate of effusion of B times the square root of the molecular mass of B. 3.64, which is the rate of effusion of oxygen, times the square root of 32 grams per mole. I'm not being very, very good with my, my significant digits, am I? Is equal to 4.58 milliliters per second times the square root of the mass of B. So we work this out and I come out that the square root of the mass of B is 4.50. Now folks, don't screw up your math at this point. The square root of the mass of B is 4.50. Therefore the mass of B is 4.50 squared. So it's 20.2 grams per mole. And yes, that is significantly lighter than oxygen, isn't it? Remember how rates must be expressed. And be really, really careful in this portion of the problem. And remember, it is the square root of the mass of B that is equal to 4.50. So the mass of B then must be squaring both sides of that equation. Let's try another problem, but let's use a different way of expressing the rate. And let me show you a point at which it is very care if you're very careful, you won't get your rates mixed up. Here's the problem. If oxygen effuses from a container in five minutes, what is the molecular weight of a gas effusing from the same container in four minutes? Well, we use the same expression to solve the problem, but let's watch the way we express the rates. The rate of oxygen is one over five minutes. Remember, the time has got to be in the denominator. So if the time has got to be in the denominator, so it is one batch of oxygen in five minutes times the square root of the mass of oxygen, which is 32 grams per mole, is equal to. Now how are you going to express the rate of effusion of the other gas? Well, it's 1 over 4 minutes. It's 4 reciprocal minutes. That's right. Times the square root of the mass of B. Working this out then, I came out that the square root of the mass of B was approximately 4.525. And squaring both sides now, I get that the mass of B is 20.5 grams per mole. Folks, watch the way you express your rate. Brought to you courtesy of Chemistry Professor, offering complete courses in chemistry on DVD. Join us at our site on the World Wide Web at chemistryprofessor.com.